Hello everyone, this is Mustang Blobo coming at you with another Kindred Fates video. This time we are going to be doing another breakdown of a team. I don't have a whole lot more of these planned, but the first one went pretty well, so I figured I might as well do it for the couple other teams I play regularly. Here we have another team you guys might be familiar with. It's my double debuff team. This team is probably the one that's undergone the most renovations in the recent memory with the addition of Avion and, and me trying to get good with Avion and everything like that. And this team is one I also considered to be kind of brokenly overpowered for a little bit. But after playing more games with it against more variety of people, I can see some weaknesses that it has. And um, it's particularly strong on closed maps where maps like forest it can kind of lack a little bit or at least for me it can but maybe you can take what i've learned of this map so far of this team so far and apply it to other maps and that's what we're here for first things first we already talked about Embear a lot in my last team video Embear and this team is very similar to Embear in the previous team he's basically just a bruiser of the group i wouldn't go so far as to call him straight up tanky but he is Definitely the meat. He's the closest thing to a tank the group has, and he's also really good burst damage with explosion and stuff like that. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about him, sorry, I talked about him a lot before, but yeah, he's just here to provide some substance to an otherwise very squishy team. And then Avion. Avion is kind of the centerpiece. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I will mention Avion has black mask because that it works well with the two debuffs hence the name double debuff we're going more in detail on why school can and cypher are here besides for the debuffs but for now you need to know avion relies heavily on that so you'll get those two debuffs and you'll switch between Slifer and Skullkin rapidly to apply debuffs rapidly to your opponent. You can, like, for example, start with Slifer, debuff, like, bounce onto him, debuff, switch straight to Skullkin, debuff, maybe teleport away from Skullkin, switch back to Slifer, jump back, and so on and so forth. It goes by really fast the first little bit, then you get a little bit of a slowdown. Your opponent does have some time to react if they realize what you're doing, so the first hit is pretty important. And that's where Avion comes in, because even with only two applications of the debuffs, Avion, Black Mask, can still do huge damage. Twister, Homing Shot, and Escape Draft are going to be your primary forms of damage. Um, Razor Wind is more for movement, and Thunderclap is more for a, uh, just to give you something of a ranged attack, even though it's not going to hit most of the time. It's kind of like Ratchet's Light. Escape Draft can be used as like a last ditch effort. You can rush up to your opponent, use escape draft and do gargantuan amount of damage to them after they've been debuffed and you have black mask and everything. And then you can even lead that into doing more debuffs or doing like a finisher with like Slifer or Embear or something. Twister is just a little bit of a add on because Avion didn't really have any other moves I felt like fit well with what I was trying to do, which is mostly a ranged Avion build and um, it can do some heavy damage but it's a little bit inaccurate compared to like homing shot or escape draft where escape draft is high risk high reward homing shot is just good consistent damage but twister is you have to be in a little bit more of a specific scenario to use it but when you can get away with it, it is well worth the damage homing shot is by far the bread and butter avion's flying lets it essentially nullify cover um, you just have to be careful they don't homing shot you back, and they can also shield, reflect, or dodge your homing shot without too much difficulty if they know what you're doing. They don't even really have to see you. If they hear you flying, and they know you're coming over them, one thing I've done is simply just pop shield, and then if your shield starts to get low, just start spamming dodge, and Avion will run out of stamina before you run out of shield and stamina. So that's one thing that you have to kind of surprise them with it a little bit, or you're going to be in a little bit more trouble there. And then Razor Wind, like I said, is for, uh, you know, movement abilities when you're not flying. Help you get around a little bit more. And then Thunderclap is absolutely wonderful damage. But, as you can see here, you have to charge it. That cap of 150 is very nice, but it takes a while to charge. And it's really, really easy to dodge. And here's the stats for each ability. If you wanted to see them a little bit more in detail. 
and twister force over here and then you can see homing shot which counts as an air type <clears throat> ability because of avion's passive which you can see here windbringer null type moves become air type moves and then razor wind you can juggle people with it but i've never really got that to work well so that's not i try not to really hit people with this unless i absolutely have to because of black mask but it's a good like a rush substitute <clears throat> now we move on to slifer his passive is collector hold up to three items at once this comes in handy with pilfer but first off we have crescent strike the user strikes three large crescent shapes dealing damage to all enemies it makes contact with it's a little bit less effective on kimfo Kadoki or shovel it as they're a little bit harder to hit with it but like i said it can be a good finisher especially after you debuff with them crescent strike does some pretty hefty damage and you can use stuff like pilfer and bounce to get in really close and then hit them up the debuffs i've already explained that a little bit about the switching back and forth to debuff quickly pilfer can help remove survival items from your opponent such as peach which will get used very quickly if you're doing debuffs and rations this can make your opponent very vulnerable to your debuff strats even more than they would be normally because they can't recover from it as easily so you can items i just have chrysanthidote on slifer because i feel like slifer is probably going to have more problems with a uh, skulkin then it will in bear because you're not going to be getting close to in bear you can probably get close to skulking without too much worry besides for cosmic cloud but in bear has way too many things to punish you if you get close you basically want to pilfer and then get away you don't really want to stick around and throw crescent strikes at them or anything like that so i would prefer to fight a skulking 1v1 with slifer that's why i have sent the dude on there Fling can then throw useless items such as like maybe you get some aloe or extra xanthidotes that you don't need or don't want or you know if they don't even have a skulk in it so let your xanthidote be like a refillable ammo that you can use and do some decent damage especially with the debuffs like I said it all comes back to the debuffs and bounce is almost completely used for mobility you can finish someone off with it much like razor wind but the vast majority of the time you're going to be using this to get Slifer around and be more mobile. For Skulkin, we have um, Rations. Much like I explained last time, is just there to help Skulkin's survivability out a little bit. And overall, you're going to see Skulkin has a very similar build, if not the exact build, of my, old, uh, my other team. The only difference is being is you have double debuffs now so stuff like homing shot becomes a lot more valuable and teleport and becomes a lot more valuable because you can you know debuff teleport away switch back like i was talking about but overall this skullkin is going to be played a lot more debuff centric and a lot less aggressive than i would on my other team this is probably going to be really rare for the skulkin to actually go into combat unless something has happened to avion skulkin's basically avion's backup because the homing shot is really the bread and butter of this build in general because of the fact that it does so much damage after everyone has been debuffed but yeah i think that about sums this build up if you guys have any more questions about it in the comments below please let me know i've actually seen some people mention something in the can face discord which i would be pretty interested in if you guys are which is a build review series if you have a build you'd like to see me review you can go into my uh, discord link in the description and maybe share it in the kindred fates tab and um i'll give it a look and maybe we can get this started and do like a new build series where i review everyone's builds but until then this has been lost here booba signing off hope you all have a wonderful day Goodbye, God bless, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.